Hey everyone, Matt Lake here with another Unreal 5 tutorial. In today's video, we're going to set up an asset action utility, which is derived from the editor utilities. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you might recognize the editor utilities widget. Basically, the difference with an asset action utility is that it's per asset base and there's no UI or any interface with it. So I had a request yesterday from Marco who's having a very specific problem um, and I suggested doing this pathway and I'll do a tutorial to explain how to solve it. Uh, so we'll get into his very specific problem at the end of the video, but uh, yeah, let's dive right in on how to set up a asset action utility. Let's move over to the content browser and let's navigate to our editor utilities folder. Uh, we can create a asset action utility simply by right clicking, scrolling down to the editor utility section and opening the editor utility blueprint window. And from this interface, you can select Asset Action Utility. And this will create a new built blueprint. So let's go Editor Utility uh, Blueprint. And we'll do Tutorial. So once we've got this open, what we can do is we can start out by creating a function. Um, let's create one just called um, Assign Material. And as soon as we hit compile and save, uh, we've basically created a function which we can apply to assets in the editor. Uh, so it's more for production and not runtime gameplay logic. Uh, as you will notice that this function automatically is enabled call an editor over here on the right. So what we can do is we go back to our content browser and we go to pretty much any asset in the project, right click, and you'll notice there's a new option, for scripted asset actions. And you see we've got the assign material function we've just made. If I navigate through any object type, it's exactly the same. So basically we've got a function that we can call on any asset, uh, but we only want to call it on uh, say static meshes. Um, so what we can do is if we go back into the functions here and hover over the, the bar, we now have an override dropdown. And these are pre-existing functions that we can change the function specific to this editor utility blueprint. So get supported class if we open that, and you'll see it's just returning a single value. And this return value is the class of the asset type. So by default, this is all assets in the editor. But if we just delete this node here and change this dropdown to whatever we want. So in this instance, we're going to pick static mesh. Let's just scroll down, look for our static mesh. And then we got a static mesh. Make sure not to pick any type of actor or component unless that's specifically what you're looking for. Make sure you're picking the asset type. So we're after static mesh. You'll notice now, uh, if we navigate, if we open up any object type, it is not there unless we open up a static mesh and we now have the scripted asset actions. So there we go. And we can only apply it to there. So if we go back to our assign material function, we can start doing things to these assets that we have selected. Uh, so we can start off by simply um, grabbing every selected asset. So we can do this by getting the get selected assets node. And we can plug that straight in. And what this is going to do is going to return a array of all of the selected assets because you can do this on one object or you can select it on multiple. Okay. So what we're going to do is going to iterate through every item in the array with a for loop. So let's do for each loop. So we can deal with each individual asset individually. And because we've made this class support only static meshes, uh, we're going to need to cast to a static mesh. Uh, so you, you might be wondering why we're casting in here. Um, basically, if we get the asset, we can't do a lot to it. So if we get, get materials, there's there's no functions for it. Uh, there's no functions for like set materials, set this or etc. Whereas if we cast to a very specific asset type, be that a texture, a skeletal mesh, anything, we uh, we can read a whole lot more and we can write to a lot more. So let's uh, cast to a static mesh. Again, making sure it's the static mesh and not the actor. And now if we go into here, you'll notice that we can do get material, which we couldn't do before we cast. Okay. So that's why we have to cast. So make sure if you're doing this on textures, you're casting to a texture. So for example, uh, let's just get our display name. Um, get display name of this mesh and let's print the name. Print string and we'll plug that straight in. And what we can do is if we go back over to our content browser, pull over our log and right click, run the script. What we should get is a print of each individual name. There we go, we got stat mesh cone, cube, cylinder, plane, sphere, torus. Brilliant. So that's the basic premise. If you're doing things like casting to textures, um, you can expose a whole world of like setting the sRGB parameters. You can, instead of texture group, 
Um, you can do all sorts of things. It's really good for bulk applying settings. Uh, very useful unless you're using the bulk editor um, or you know how to use Python. This is a node based version of doing those exact same things. Hopefully using this will speed you up massively. Um, you can deploy these into the editor and then your whole team can get them as well, which is really powerful, really useful. But now if you remember at the beginning of the video, I mentioned Marco having a very specific problem. We're now gonna delve into how to fix that very specific problem. Um, so basically his example is he wanted to uh, batch assign materials to static meshes uh, because unlike a skeletal mesh, um, which you can go into uh, the asset actions and bulk edit materials in here. For some reason in Unreal, you cannot do that with a um, static mesh. So I suggested using an editor utility and there is a way to do it. It's a little bit convoluted because again, in here you just can't get the slot count. Uh, you can't get the material count. You can get materials and the material index, but not the count. It gets static materials, doesn't give you the correct count either. So there is a way around this um, and I'm just gonna demonstrate how. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reassign the materials on all of these static meshes uh, to uh, the color black. So they're all gonna match the cone. In this example, they all only have one single element, but you might have uh, materials with multiple elements, that type of thing. So what we're gonna do is we're basically, we're gonna iterate through a random amount of material slots because we don't know how many material slots there is because we can't get that information. And we're gonna make a for loop that breaks when it finds a invalid material slot. So to do that, we're gonna do a for loop with a break. And we're just gonna put a random last index value in there. So um, if you know the maximum amount of materials on the static mesh, like if there's five on the biggest one, then put the number five. You can put this number to as high as you want because we're setting it up to actually break, stop when it finds an invalid material. So from here, we're gonna put a branch and we're gonna break this if um, the index is not valid. So let's get a material from the static mesh and we're gonna plug in the index from the for loop directly into there, just tie that up. I'm gonna check if it's valid. So, are you valid? Plug it into there. And if it is valid, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, again, off the static mesh, we're gonna set the material of that index, oh, of that index, Let's just tidy up our lines a little bit. And we're gonna set it to the color black as we wanted. Okay. What we're gonna do is we wanna make sure this breaks by selecting the branch and plugging that directly into the break. And our graph is gonna look a little bit noodly. So let's just try tidy this up. And that's what we're gonna do. So we've got a cast into the stack mesh. We're gonna loop through a random amount of the uh, material instances because we don't know how many material instances there is. Uh, we're gonna check if it's in a valid material. If it's not a valid material, we're gonna break because we've hit the maximum amount of material slots. If it is, then we're gonna set the material. Okay, so let's go back to our content browser, select all of these and boom, there you go. So I hope that helps Marco. Um, so yeah, guys, I know that was a very specific problem for Marco, but the editor utilities are very powerful. You can do this type of thing. Um, like I say, you can use it for textures. Uh, we use it in my company for setting very specific uh, texture groups per discipline. So there's one for the character team, there's one for the environment team, et cetera. Um, so yeah, I hope you've learned something and I hope that's helpful, Marco. And I hope that solves your problem so you don't have to manually do all of those material assignments. Thank you for watching. Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at MattLakeTA uh, or comment below. I reply to all of the uh, comments. And thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.